Hey, welcome everybody to Save Your Sundays. My name is Michael Pratt. Welcome back for another episode. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for continuing to subscribe. Like it, share it. Uh, certainly keep subscribing. Tell your friends about it. Uh, the concept of Save Your Sundays is really to make sure that you are in a great position so that you're ready to retire uh, and that you're ready to kick back, that you can certainly make every day a Sunday. Um, I told you last week, there's a bell down there. You click that, it's a subscribe bell. It'll give you notifications when our new episodes are posted. So I um, <clears throat> hope you do, I hope you share it. And again, welcome back. So let's get into it. Last week we talked about a new concept called the financial death spiral. And I told you there was a varying definitions out there on what it would be and I asked you to, to fact check me and I'm certain that you did. Um, here's what you have to understand. Everyone has kind of a little different um, definition of what a financial death spiral is. For our intents and purposes, it's this. Anytime you get into a situation where your losses are greater than your returns, you are entering in that financial death spiral. So remember last week I made you all uh, orchard owners. Congratulations. You still are orchard owners and you had 100,000 apples. And then we had to figure out, hey, what happens if we lose 10% of our crop? what happens and what do we need to do to get back to our original uh, crop production number. So the first scenario was a 10% loss. What did we need? We need an 11.1% gain to get back to ground zero. Uh, scenario number two, we lost 15%. Well, then we had to gain back 17.6% of our production just to get back to ground zero. Well, this week, it's gonna make it a little more interesting. Because what good does it do to own 100,000 apples if you aren't selling them or distributing them or trying to make some profit so that you can continue to make your apple orchard grow? Well, that, my friends, is what we're going to talk about today. So stay with me. We're going to run through a couple of examples. Again, this is just part two of another segment of the financial death spiral and just kind of breaking down exactly what you need to understand um, so that you can prevent yourself from entering into a financial death spiral. All right, so let's begin. Okay, last week we talked about you being a orchard owner and you had 100,000 apples. Well, this week, you still have 100,000 apples. However, we're gonna introduce a new concept and that concept is distribution. So we've gotta sell some apples in order to make some money, right? So let's assume that we take a 5% distribution or we sell 5% of our apples. Not a bad deal. However, here comes the other curveball. The market still takes a 10% decline. So you are at 95,000. We take a 10% decline. Remember we distributed 5%. Now we are down 9,500 apples. Oh my goodness. So what do we have left? Well, that leaves us 89,550. Well, if we distribute 5% and we lose 10% and our goal is to get back to our 100%, what do we have to do? Well, we've got to somehow come up with a 17.6% return or growth back in order to get to ground zero, which was our starting point at 100,000 apples. So understand that when you distribute and you take a loss, that percentage of recovery or that return rate, if you will, has to be greater than your distribution and your loss in order to get back to where you need to be. If you do achieve a 17.6% return rate, it actually puts our apples back at ground zero with a little bit of a gain of 100,598 apples. I hope that makes sense to you. And you say, well, man, Mike, what if, what if we have greater than a 10% decline? What happens then? And I say, well, let me show you exactly what happens. So we take our 5% distribution again, because we've got to sell some apples to make some money. And this time, the market does us no favors. 
and our production and our worms and our loss of apples, it's all of a sudden we lose 15%. Well, that means we've lost 14,250 apples. That's no bueno, right? Because that leaves us at 80,750 apples. Well, what do we have to do? Same concept, our gain has to be greater than our distribution and our loss. Well, the larger these numbers become, the larger the gain has to be. 25% increase is what we need in production in order to get back to our base. And that number becomes 100,937 apples. And again, that well, I keep using dollars, I meant to say apples. Uh, 100,937 gets us back up to production. So what's the answer? The answer is this. The answer is we have to make sure that we are understanding when we take a distribution and when we take a loss, our increase has to be greater. It has to be at least 25% if we're taking a 15% loss and a 5% distribution. Now, this doesn't look like the normal Save Your Sunday studio. And the reason why is because we're moving offices and we're excited to announce that. Uh, we've got a new office location. It, it'll be in the notes to find out where it is. But the point that I want to make and the analogy that I want to draw is things move, things change. And you have to understand the changes that happen, not only to your apples, but to your personal financial situation in order to understand what gains you need to make to get back to ground zero. Next week, we're gonna talk about safeguarding some of this. And we're gonna talk about how we can be better prepared so that our returns are certainly exceeding our distributions and our shortfalls. That's all I've got from the Save Your Sunday's temporary studio this week. We'll be back in our regular production studio next week. Thank you very much. This is Michael Pratt. Be well, stay well. Ching, bling, bling, you ain't talking money, then you're talking no matter.